Hello Blender community and thank you for watching this tutorial video. This is my first tutorial so don't judge it too harshly and if there's something I don't explain quite well enough or something you don't understand please ask me in the comments. I'll try to answer all of them if I can. I should be able to, I'm not very popular. But anyway, let's jump right into it. This is a tutorial on how to make the Rasengan effect that you can download from BlendSwap. I'll have a link in the description. And I'm doing this because it was requested by a Mr. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Muhammad Adanish, who requested that I do a tutorial on how I made it. And so, here it is. Alright, start off and turn on screencast key so that you guys know what buttons I'm pressing. And I am working in Blender 2.69 because I was having some stability issues with Blender 2.7. Speaking of stability issues, this is the third time I'm recording this because Blender crashed and once again reminded me the importance of saving frequently. But anyway, let's jump into the Rasengan. First thing you're going to want to do is jump into the Blender render. That's what I made this in because at the time I had no idea how to use the cycles render renderer and this is the only way I know how to do the um, the lens flare effect or twinkling effect that is in the test video. I have a link to that also in the description or as an annotation if I can figure it out. I haven't made many YouTube videos, but I hope to start soon. Alright. So, shift A, mesh, cube. Hit tab to go into edit mode. A to deselect all the vertices. B, select all the visible vertices. Make sure you don't select that back vertice there. X, vertices. And you should be left with one singular vertex. And hit 5 to go into, I believe it's perspective view. Not very good at all the jargon. Move that up and then out to blender units. Reminds me, metric. To meters or blender units. I like using metric because it has something that I can apply it to. And then move it over so that it is level on the y axis with the origin. The reason you need to have it level on the y-axis and not the x-axis or the z-axis is because we're going to be rotating it around the x. We're going to be rotating around its local x. That's very important. Because if you rotate around the local x, you're not going to get a Rasengan. You're going to get a bunch of particles rotating in a cylinder sort of pattern. That was that was an issue I had when I first made it. And just because it crashed earlier, I'm going to hit Control S, save it to the desktop as the Sangon Tutorial. Okay. And now that we have our vertex, we're going to give it a particle system. New particle system. Just call it. I'm going to change this down to 500 and lifetime to eh, 50 is okay. Change the velocity to 0 on the emitter geometry. I believe that's what it says. Yes, on the emitter geometry. And now in physics, that's okay. And in render, we're going to come over here to group, or not group, object. And then we're going to create an object in a new layer. Click down here in the new layer button. Shift A, mesh, icosphere. And then come over here to your toolbar. And where it says subdivisions, bump that down to 1. This is a very low poly sphere. And the reason it has to be a sphere is to get the right shape of the trails that it leaves. And now we go back into our particle system and have it emit icospheres. Control A to make sure it's working. Oop. It's emitting from the origin. 
Uh, I know what I did. Emission verts. That's a very important button to hit. And also go to field weights and turn gravity to zero. So that you just have your icospheres emitting in that spot. Without any velocity or gravity acting on it so they're not being thrown around in odd directions. Okay, now that we have that done, we're going to have to add a material to our icosphere so that it looks like they were saying that in the end. New material, call it blue. And the fuse, slightly blue. And the specular, not quite as blue as the diffuse, but still blue. It's not really important since we're going to turn the emit up to, I think, oh come on, click it. Five was the final value that I decided on. Actually, let's turn on shadeless. Nope. No, don't turn on shadeless. That's a bad idea. Alright, now you have your little particle right there. Actually, that's looking a little too big. And you can fix that by going into your particle system, going to render, and changing the size down to 0 0.015. A bit bigger than that. 0 0.025. That's looking pretty good. Control S, save right quick. So that if it crashes again, I can start back from here. And the lifetime is fine. It crashed last time when I messed with the lifetime, so I'm very wary about touching that button. I think the final emission render I had was about 10,000 particles, which is way too heavy for me to run while screen capturing because I am running a very, very weak computer. But. I think 500 will be okay for tutorial purposes for now. I can try it at 1,000. 1,000, not 100. And see if it works out. You're going to want to split your window into a graph editor. Select your particle and open up this toolbar on the right. I'm not sure what this toolbar is called. You can go down to rotation, change this from global to local, and your rotation hit I. And we only want it to rotate along the X, so we're going to delete the Y and the Z rotations here just by clicking on them and hitting X, so that we're left with just the X. And now that we have a keyframe, we're going to come over here to the right toolbar in the animation window or the graph editor window hit add modifier built in function or I do that every time generator sorry so now we have a constant line going straight up with a slight curve to the right meaning this will constantly rotate and it will never stop And now we can join these windows back because I don't think we'll be going back in there unless something breaks. Zero. Hit I. Oop. Okay, now that we have our particle, it's time to animate it. We're going to go over here to this right toolbar, go up to animation, making sure that we're in local rotation, and hit I. That has added a keyframe, so this particle starts here in the animation. We're going to want to right-click, split area, down here, and open up a graph editor. In the graph editor, we only want this to rotate on its x-axis. So we're going to select the z rotation, hit x to delete that, and the y rotation, and hit x to delete that. So that it's only rotating on the x. And you may notice that it's cube action 013. That's because during filming there was an issue with Blender and I had to come back and fix it and set up the particle system again. That's why some things may be weird. Anyway, after you delete those two, you want to open up this side panel in the graph editor and add a modifier 
generator. So that it is rotating along the x indefinitely. You probably know where this is going. And then that cube, I'm going to give it a name so I don't lose it. Same down. Emit. That's a good name. Alright. We have our Sangon emission particle. We're going to hit Shift D and R. And this new particle, you'll notice, retains all of the animation data from our original Sangon emission particle, or emission vertice. So that now all we have to do is hit A, Shift D, and the more of these you do, the better it's going to look, for the most part. There's a point which it's going to look terrible. If you do too many, it just looks like a blue sphere. But for this, for this test, I'm only going to use a few particles so Blender doesn't crash on me. Speaking of which, I'm going to save again. All right, that's looking good. Now we have our animation. If you notice there, the particles are emitting from the origin, sort of. That is a bug, and you can fix it if it starts happening in your animation by coming down here to the cache and just changing the step up and then back down, and then restarting your animation. That usually fixes it. Okay. Now we have our particles. And if you think they're going too fast, you can just open up the graph editor again. Open up the graph editor. You can select a particle, open it up, come down here, and you can change this value, and it will, should, move the, no, that's the wrong one, that's odd, should be moving this slightly to the left or right to slow it down, but it isn't. I guess this is what you get. All right. Anyway, now we have this. It's not looking particularly good. As you can notice, there are a lot of these little spaces in between all of our particles, which if you have your particles set to a high enough number, you won't see as much, but they'll still be there. You can fix this by going to compositing and hitting use nodes. And that is the render output, shift A, search, blur, add in a blur node, and a value of about two works for the final render with enough particles. You may have to make this more or less depending, but that makes all the spaces in between the little particles pretty much invisible. Let's go back to default. Now what we're going to want to do is add another icosphere into the center and scale it down. I want to give this new material, call it Halo. And then we're going to click the button that says Halo. Actually, I'm going to move this to a new layer for recording. You don't have to if you have a fast enough computer, but I want to look at it in the rendered view so that I can see what's going on. And now we have that ball of light. I want to turn the size down a little bit so that. Oh, oops, my bad. You don't need an icosphere, you need another singular. Vertice. 
can't control alt shift C geometry to origin and now that one vertice is in the center on top of the origin so now we have that single ball of light and uh, here's the flare button this button does magical things to your ball of light press it should be streaks coming out of it I'm not sure where they are going on let me do a quick render oh, forgot to add a camera come out of rendered mode a camera control zero to move to view render image Oop. yeah it's still just the ball right there that's what I thought. Hmm. What's causing that? This needs to be bright white, first of all. Slightly larger size. Weird. You can add rings if you want to. Ah, there are the lines. There's the streaks. I'm going to turn the rings down a little bit. Oh, I wanted that big ring there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Down the sub flares a little bit. And now we are going to animate the number of lines. I'm going to split this window again. And go once again into the graph editor. Come over here to lines. Hit I. And now that we have a keyframe there, we can add a modifier, and we want to add a noise modifier. So that over time, there are, ooh, that's a little much, random numbers of lines. I don't want to turn that down. There we go so that we can get random numbers of lines if you look over here as you scrub through the frames the lines go up and down turn that up if you wanna add some, a lot more variation and that's how you get the flare and you're gonna move that to the center And then all that's left to do is, if you're just rendering an image, moving to the correct frame, hitting 1, Shift A, Camera, Control Alt 0, and hitting Render Image. Now this will take a minute because I am running a weak computer. I'm going to save again, just in case. Render image. I'm running a very weak computer. Oh, where are the lines? Let's see, where is... There it is. There's Icosphere 1. Lines. There should be some lines there. Hmm. Rendered. Well, they were there, now they're gone. Hmm. That's odd. wonder if it's getting lost in the compositing. Oh, now I remember. Oh. Now 
No, I think I remember what's happening. Let me just connect this in there. Control Shift Viewer. That adds a viewer node. Then Control Shift and clicking any node will connect it automatically to a viewer node. And if there isn't one, it will create one. It's very handy. And there, this one has our lines in it. But I think this blur node. Nope, they're still there. I thought they were gone. But they're not. And before you freak out about all these little spaces that are still here, if you have enough particles in your particle system, you won't see these at all. Also, my particles are still a little big. So. So don't worry about that. Although my lines are still really small. Hmm. Not really sure how to fix that. I'll try and fix those lines. Uh, this is probably it. Yep. If you turn up the size here, then your flares will get bigger. And you just have to scale them up until they are about par with the scene. 50 is a little excessive, apparently. I might have to turn the rings off turn the rings off. How about 15? This tutorial is running really long. Sorry. 10. Alright. Let's move that down to 5. Five looks good. Let's look at this for reference. Yeah, five's about right. Okay, and that is how you make the Rasengan effect in Blender. So, you guys have fun with this. Share the videos with me if you guys do anything cool with it. And. I'm thinking about doing the tutorial on how you can composite this into live action footage. But let me know if that's something you guys are interested in. And this really isn't the one to put into live action footage since I made this one to look like the one from the cartoon. It's not supposed to look realistic or good. Really, I guess you could say. It's just supposed to look exactly like the one that was animated for the cartoon series. But thank you for watching. I know this ran a little long, but hopefully I'll make another video. Just let me guys know what you want me to make in Blender, and I'll see if I can do a tutorial on it. Alright, and I'm out. Bye.